So Ruth, how's it going today? It's going really well. Um, is it is it sunny in Minnesota or is it snowing in Minnesota? Actually, a pretty sunny day. We got uh, warmer than it would normally be this time of year. Uh, probably a little makeup for having it be icky and cold earlier in the year. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's nice. So, oh. how old are you, are, Ruth? Um, actually, it stopped raining for a while, so um, I'm hoping to get out to walk the dog and not get as wet as it has been. Okay. It's the Pacific Northwest. It rains here. <laughs> Although the mountains are getting a fair amount of snow, so the skiers are excited. What's the, so it's, it's raining, and then what's the, what's the temperature with your raining? With it raining, it's, oh, probably in the mid 40s probably okay. it feels colder than it is because you're wet yeah but yeah still pretty well, mild compared to you getting ready for that that uh pre pre-thanksgiving weekend here so i know i remember <laughs> back from when i was younger we'd have some years where we'd have snow and ice and some of my grandparents uh family would have snowmobiles they'd roll up to my grandparents house on and then some years where it was like this year where there's just not uh not much snow at all or almost none so although i hope we have a white christmas i always enjoy having a white christmas at least in minnesota where we've got snow so oh it's hit hit or miss here hit or miss shall we well, get started yeah yeah we got some people here watching so what uh what are we gonna do today ruth all right, so today is all about scoring forms. So <clears throat> my premise when I work with folks um, is that it's worth spending the time if you're going to evaluate anything, whether it's players or coaches or referees, when you're evaluating, to spend the time to think about what do you want to evaluate? What are the results you're looking for? What are the criteria? So we're glad you're with us today. Um, I'm Ruth Nicholson, and this is Gabe Skelly. Um, we're with Team Genius, which um, actually is a great tool for evaluating players and coaches and referees and other things. So today, I want to talk about scoring forms <clears throat> and the secrets to making them work. So the foundation of whatever you're evaluating really uh, does you serves you well. So do you have a screen to share, maybe? Yeah, let me share this. Give me one second. I'm going to. Okay, give me a second. All right. So what we're going to do is walk through basically five different scoring forms. The first two are sort of foundational uh, scoring forms that we use for evaluating players, two different types, um, a quantitative and a subjective. And that'll make sense here in a minute. And then we're going to look at some applications of that beyond just evaluating youth athletes <clears throat> and look at evaluating coaches. Um, maybe you want to give them some input on how they're doing. Um, evaluating referees. And if you stick with us the whole time, we've got a way to answer the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control questions about COVID. If you need to capture answers to those questions as a part of the rules for your club, your organization, um, or your league. So um, we're working in the Team Genius um, platform and under setup is where you actually create your scoring forms. Um, So if we go over to setup, where the scoring forms are, <clears throat> and we populated um, a bunch of scoring forms just to walk through to show you how it works. Um, so let's start with the quantitative one. It's actually the fifth one down. The uh, evaluation of players. Okay. Because this is actually the one that we most of our customers use this the least, even though um, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, so Gabe, why don't you walk us through if we want to create a quantitative scoring form, how do we do it and what are the things we need to deliberately choose to make this work well for us? Yeah. So uh, when we're going in here and we want to do a setup for, you know, the quantitative scoring forms, 
um, you know, one of the things you want to do is first when you're setting these forms up, uh, I can show you by edit form, but go in here um, and of course select that first, right? So you want to actually pick the the uh, the quantitative style of form. Um, and then hit save. So that's going to have you be, that you set up that quantitative style of scoring form. Um, and then when you come in here, you know, common things that you're going to see. So this one, uh, 40 yard dash, right? So having your players uh, metered on how fast they're sprinting. So uh, if you click into, you know, edit in here uh, or add criteria, if we click edit, we can see the setup on this. So we've got 40 yard dash as a display name. Uh, we've got this one set up to average of all scores. The scoring format is gonna be minutes and seconds, of course, because that's what we're gonna score a 40 yard dash on. And then we've got it checked here that uh, faster time is better. Now, what this is gonna do is in the app or uh, on our, our web eval tool, you'll actually have a stopwatch so that your evaluators will be able to hit start, uh, stop and save. And then they'll be able to record that 40 yard dash time on their players right from our mobile app, as well as they can do it in the uh, web eval tool. Next up, we've got vertical jump, which is another common one that's used by a lot of the organizations that you know use Team Genius. I'm gonna click into this one and I'm gonna hit edit and just take a look at this one. So we've got this one set to average of all scores for vertical jump. Uh, and we've got it set as inches. So in this one, you're gonna have a picker uh, inside of Team Genius that's actually gonna drop down. So you can put in the inches that you wanna put in for your vertical jump. And then uh, this example of successful shots on goal. Now this could be goal for, you know, any type of sport. It could be, you know, somebody that's going to be playing soccer, somebody that's playing hockey, could be a lacrosse player, uh, you name the different things, but it is what kind of what you see here. So I'm going to hit edit and you can look in here and there's no format, but we put in the actual label. So it's count. So we've actually put in here uh, the amount of successful shots on goal by that player for this specific criteria. Ruth, do you see clubs setting these up a lot? Um, I'm seeing it a little bit more. Um, the it's funny. A lot of them use the subjective criteria, which is a scale of you know one to five or one to ten. Um, but this is increasingly being used. I think it's important to remind people to actually enter the units that you're measuring. Mm -hmm. That's that's for some reason that's easy to forget. Um, do you have a way to show how this looks if I was on, say, my tablet or my phone and I was actually scoring players? Yeah, for sure. Um, would you want to see the view on the actual like iPad or would you think you'd want to see it if you were looking at, you know, from the, our web eval tool? Show it to me on the iPad if you can. I want to I want to see you said there's a stopwatch in there. Yep. Let me grab that. So the only thing I'm gonna to do here to get this so that I can I can actually see this one, this evaluation of players, to make sure that I've got some players that are set up. So I'm gonna to go to player assignments. I've got that one player checked in. So I've got myself uh, on, on Gabe's team and I'm number one, two, three. So I just need to go into my setup, uh, evaluation schedule and just make sure that I'm just gonna use this uh, first example of a session so that I'll be able to get into that one. Save that one. Don't normally let players evaluate themselves. Um, although we have set up evaluations where players can do self-assessments. Um, I didn't include that example here, but. Uh, All right, let me grab my iPad and get this set up here. All right, can you see the iPad on the screen there, Ruth? Yes, we can. Okay. Oh, one second. We're right back here. All right, this is firing up. Let me jump back in here. All right, so I got my iPad pulled up um, and I'm going to use that access key. So when you're gonna log in, you're gonna see the 
you know, you put your name, email address, and this access key for this example is going to be 8AV3T. I'll put that in here. 8AV3T. I'm going to sign in. Move this up here. So I've got my one player. So I've got me checked in. Uh, I'm going to hit start here down on the bottom. And we're going to go to that evaluation of players, the quantitative. So I'm going to go in here and it's going to pull up my player. Um, I'm actually going to go to player view. So it's going to show me my one player with all these different criteria. And so for that 40 yard dash, I'm going to hit the click on the stopwatch and hit start and the players running, they're running, they're running. Uh, and then I'm going to stop that. And then I'm going to save it. If you're going to do multiple instances where you really want to do just the best out of a couple runs, you could actually click on that again, uh, see the previous uh, time there. You can see that current time that's in the system. Uh, I could start, stop, and then if this wasn't a better time, this is a faster time for a 40 yard dash, I'd hit save and it'll replace that previous score. Now, an yeah. example of the vertical jump, uh, I can actually click on the drop down here and then I can put in, you know, the inches of vertical jump of that player. So we'll put in, you know, example, 45 inches. That'll auto save. So now I've got my vertical jump. For something like the successful shots on goal, you could actually sit here with the plus and minus and just, you know, as they're taking shots in the goal, you could just tap in uh, pluses uh, for those shots or minus if they didn't actually make one that they were trying to attempt. So, and the green check marks are going to apply. So you see those are auto saved and those scores will be on the back end so you can see them, but this shows you how you can enter in those, you know, pretty simple, but, but commonly used uh, quantitative values. All right. So the quantitative scoring form, um, what do you think? About a quarter of our scoring forms are maybe quantitative ones right now? Probably. Yep. Um, so what that means is the bulk of our folks are using subjective scoring forms. So why don't we go back to the scoring forms page? Oh, there you go. A little different view if you change it, uh, the uh, view on your, your iPad or tablet. So I'll move this right. over. We've got more space in the setup. There we go. Right. So if we go back to scoring forms, <clears throat> the other scoring forms examples we have for you today are all based on a subjective scoring form. So if we go down to the evaluation of players, the third scoring form, if you can talk through just the basics of setting up a subjective scoring form, in general. And then we're going to look at some applications beyond just players. Yeah. So, you know, subjective scoring form. So this one, we've got, you know, four, four criteria set in here. Um, I'm just going to click again and edit just to show you how this is set up here. Uh, and you can see that you've got, you know, the, the subjective style set and you've got scoring increments. You can actually pick increments uh, that you can score from a 10th of a point up to a full point. Uh, your max score can really be as high as you want. And this is going to be a slider scale. So, uh, you or your evaluators are going to go in and score the players uh, where a count, an accurate score, or one that's going to actually be recorded are going to be a one through a 10. Uh, I'm going to hit save just so we can get back to the setup here. We've got options here that looks like this one. We've got technical, tactical, uh, psychological, mental skills, and physical fitness. I can click into any one of these and see, you know, look at the setup a little bit. If I click on the three dots, hit edit, it's going to show me the setup. So We've got the display name, input, which is slider scale. There are options to do some other, other ways of putting in uh, scores. So we've got drop down and button group, but this is slider scale. So you're gonna see a slider scale where you can score this player from a one to a 10. Uh, in settings, you can see the average setup. So average of all scores, average remove worst score, average but remove best and worst scores and best score only. You can also set it so that the scoring here is low score is better. And then instructions, you've got instructions that you can uh, your evaluators will see. So include specific skills needed to effectively participate in the sport, such as shooting and ball slash puck handling. So these instructions, just like you see the eye here in uh, the Team Genius main setup, this is what it would look like for your evaluators when they're in the mobile app as they'd scroll over or hover over the eye and they would be able to see those instructions that you put in for them and how to evaluate. And these, these are set up right now uh, so that these could be scored on that slider scale. In the setup inside of any form, you can drop and drag these to move them around so that they're going to be uh, the way that they, you want them to show uh, for your evaluators in the app. All right. So 
do you want to show how the how this looks in the app as well? Sure. So a subjective scoring form on your tablet. One second to hook back up my iPad. Did it, did it lose, <coughs> lose the connection? Got it here. It's going to move back over. Okay, move this over. So I'm going to be in the same same uh, setup here. So you can click on the hamburger menu on the top, and move back. And this time I'm going to hit start and I'm going to do evaluation of player subjective. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, and so I'm going to flip it so that it's in the iPad mode. And you can see here we've got tactical, so I can move that slider over uh, and slide and score some of these players. So I can give that player, say, an eight, and you can see it auto saving for technical. Uh, if I want to click into that I for instructions, you can see the instructions here. I can also put in some comments if I want to by clicking in, uh, and I can type out some comments if I want to, uh, or I could use that, you know, voice dictation where it's going to actually pick up what I'm saying, and those are going to be the comments that are. Uh, rolled out for the player. So you can actually speak and the text will be translated for those comments on your players. I'm going to exit out of this, go down here to tactical. They're going to score a 10 on tactical. Maybe they're not great on this one. So a three and then a 10 again. And so that player has now been scored on those, all those different criteria along with comments at the top. All right. <clears throat> so we looked at at the two basic kinds of scoring forms, the quantitative form and the subjective form. And we use players as an, as a, an example, um, actually this player called Gabe that we just scored. <clears throat> but let's go back because the really cool thing about scoring forms is it's, they're not just for players. So maybe you've got a set of coaches and you want your uh, coaching staff, maybe your board of directors, maybe your parents to give your coaches some feedback. Um, <clears throat> and the scoring form I put together for evaluation of coaches, which is the second one down. This is a subjective scoring form. It's based on that slider scale of, um, I think I did this on one to five. Um, and this is an example that actually I adapted from some work that um, Bobby Howe and I did some years ago. Um, he used to be the director of coaching for US soccer. And so when he evaluated his coaches when he was working as a director of coaching, these are the sorts of things he tended to use. So you can have, evaluate coaches or invite your parents to evaluate coaches based on these kinds of criteria. Um, communication, positive environment, organization, um, and those sorts of things. So a different way to use scoring forms to evaluate a different set of folks. Gabe, pop up to that very first one that says referees because okay. um, we had a we had a customer at one point that actually used this to evaluate their referees can you talk about that particular application yeah so um i think i think coach is important too did you want to say more about coaches ruth or um before we move off of that one i hadn't thought do you have a, a question like something i forgot no, I just think that this is a good one. You know, I, I, one of the things I see a lot with evaluation of coaches is just like we have lifetime player development of our players, you can do the same thing on coaches, right? Or, or I guess That's referees right. as well. So, you know, when you're evaluating these different skills on your coaches, um, you know, you can see, track the progress of those coaches, you know, season over season or year over year. And it gives you that lifetime development history of your coaches working with you. So a super nice thing to see um, and either, keep internally. So maybe your board is going to look at it and your coaches or share with the coaches for things that they can uh, get better at or that they did great. Actually, you just reminded me of something because one of the things um, <clears throat> when Bobby and I were working on this, he had his, he had paid coaches. He paid his coaches. They weren't volunteers. And, and he had a variety, this, this pay structure that included what kind of education and licenses they held. Um, this was with soccer. Um, how long they had been with the club. There was a retention bonus if, if you had been with the club for a number of years. But there also was a merit bonus um, that if you did particularly well on your annual valuation, there was a, a pot of money he had in his budget for merit um, pay as well. So he had a a multiple multiple ways of compensating his coaches and one was based on the assessment well it could be something too or if they do you know if the coach does well enough maybe eventually they do some kind of uh you know not just compensation but give them a certificate on you know they're doing great on on the uh coaching and improvement kind of thing 
So referees, you've also worked with folks who used assessments of referees. Um, yeah, and I, so, I simplified this from um, one of the ones we use for our customers because it was a little longer than this. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, imagine, you know, if you're a youth sporting organization or, you know, organization of a le different level too, uh, you know, referees are a huge thing. You need referees to be able to play your games, uh, scrimmages, those kind of things, like mostly games. Um, but referees too, there's a high burnout level. You know, you watch or you Google anything about referees. And one of the first things you're going to find is that there's huge turnover and burnout and referees. And one of the ways that you can keep referee referees and also know, you know, who the better ones are is to, you know, give them some critiques and actually monitor their progress. So this example here looks like we've got pregame so that, you know, a pregame setup, how they come uh, set up to the field and how they're going to do things. Let's see if I hit edit on pregame. Um, so we've got a, lot, a slider scale set up. So you'd score them on a slider scale. Um, and if I click on instructions, so you might put something in pregame that's related to, you know, did they come dressed in appropriate attire and wearing their whistle and having a stopwatch to see some of those things? Or you might just, you know, uh, evaluate them with on the slider scale on on that subjective metric of how they were prepared for the pregame. Um, communication with other officials. So, you know, maybe watching them during the, the process and making sure that uh, while they're at the game and while they're uh, conducting themselves and refereeing the, the game that they're, you know, I guess, taking kindly to parents that are screaming or other people that are screaming, or maybe they're not screaming at other people. Um, and that they're, they have good communication with the, what's going to be expected uh, during the game with the coaches and other referees and other people. Um, communication with players, of course, you know, how the referees are communicating with the players on calls and expectations of the games. Game control, so control of the game, making sure that it stays, you know, uh, appropriately governed by the rules that the referee is supposed to be applying. Uh, and professionalism attitude, so you know, the, how professional is that referee and how is their attitude in dealing with players and parents and coaches and other referees and those kind of things. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's something that's shown that it's very important to watch your referees and make sure that they're, um, I guess, conducting themselves in the way that you want to see with, within games and your organization, but then also giving them feedback. So the critiques on, you know, maybe positives and negatives and how they're doing um, and helping them improve. And that feedback also has hopefully ties them into wanting to work with your organization more and keep refereeing uh, for the long term. I was actually just on a meeting with some customers last night and they were talking about, and I don't know if it's just local here or other areas, but um, referees that work certain tournaments and hit certain or hours, they have a bag of medallions. I don't know if you've heard of this, Ruth, but oh. um, it was actually a large soccer club in Minnesota. And they said that, that uh, these referees and it's a big, it's a big, uh, big thing for them to have these medallions they get for, refereeing a certain amount of hours or refereeing a certain, certain uh, tournaments or these kind of things. And so they kind of get rewarded with these medallions. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but it just, you know, speaks to needing to uh, watch and educate referees as well as, uh, you know, congratulate them when they're doing a great job at what they're doing too. Uh, I actually have um, medallions from some of the tournaments I've refereed in. So, um, yeah. Do you have any examples to show us, Ruth? Any example I have? Oh, nice. <laughs> you do. So big. you got the medallions. I do. I do. And I'm guessing oh. that's, for, that's for soccer, probably. Soccer, yes. Yep. yes. And do you think that is a universal thing with soccer referees across, you know, North America where they get medallions for doing certain things? Not, it, it hasn't. I don't think it's as common as, um, as it might be. Um, okay. but I also haven't refereed in the past few years. So, um, but yeah, I do have, I do have a coin. Uh, <laughs> so the last use case, um, <clears throat> I wanted to highlight is probably at the very bottom of all your scoring forms. Yep. Um, and it has to do with COVID like everyone's favorite topic, right? Well, I had a customer Say, come and say, you know, Ruth, I've got to keep track of these questions in these forms that I've, I've got to have. And I've, I've heard it from both clubs based in the United States and in Canada. And so we just on the fly built out a different kind of scoring form. And this scoring form, even though it's subjective, it's, it's binary. Because if, 
if we go into the setup for the scoring form, if we were going to edit the scoring form itself, um, basically all the questions are yes and no questions. The Centers for Disease Control here in the United States has this series of questions you can ask when someone uh, comes to, to participate. And so the first question has to do with temperature. Do you have a temperature of 100.4 degrees or higher um, Fahrenheit? Well, so all of these criteria are set up as a slider scale of two, or in this case, it's a drop down list. So it's either a yes or a no answer to all of these criteria based on the CDC questions. So instead of using a slider scale, because I was afraid people would forget, was one a yes or a no? Mm -hmm. I set up the input using actually I used a button group it could have been a a, a drop down but um so I wanted people to say if you have a temperature and it's yes well that's actually the worst answer right it's bad news if you have a temperature yep no is the better um the better outcome so I set these up as button groups yes or no questions for each of those questions. And so for the customers that we had who needed a place to capture the answers to the questions, that was, that's what the scoring form is for. So test result, has the player received a positive test result? Did they test positive for COVID in the last 14 days? Yes or no? Again, yes is the worst answer in this case. Um, have you been in contact with anybody who has a conf who's been confirmed with COVID? Um, again, yes or no. It's a button group, so people don't have to worry about is one high or one low. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a binary yes or no thing. Illness is the player feeling ill. I put all of this in one criteria of are you feeling ill? You could also make this multiple criteria if you needed to ask, do you have a cough? Do you have a sore throat? Have you had difficulty breathing? This could become actually more than one criteria if you wanted to do it that way. Um, I know, I've, again, seen, I, I've seen with some clubs that they, they're doing a lot less for criteria and this kind of stuff where, you know, I, actually somebody on our staff there in California in the hockey club that his kids go to, they are doing something like they put you know, like 10 questions up on a board and they, they had you say yes or no to basically blank it on the questions uh, uh -huh. just to make it fast. But you, I could certainly see where you might need all the individual ones too. And it probably depends on the rules of, of your province or your association or your league um, attendance. So the last two things I put on this scoring form, um, was the player allowed to participate? Now it would seem logical that if you said yes to any of the other criteria, you probably should say no to this one. Um, but for those that had to track, did the player participate or not, this, that's what this was. And the last criteria actually is related to um, a club in Canada where <clears throat> they have a form that everybody who comes has to fill out. I think it's part of their contact tracing program. Um, so, uh, you could say, you know, did I get the form? And if you're actually using the media part of Team Genius, you actually could take a picture of the form if you wanted to. Yeah. So um, the idea was scoring forms, depending on what is the data you want to capture, what's your purpose here? So if you're evaluating players or coaches, you're looking at performance. If you're looking at COVID tracking, should, are we going to look at that? Yeah, See how it yeah. looks. Yeah, I want to pull it up here. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a place to capture that information that you're, um, <clears throat> you have to keep track of. Yep. So you can see the temperature one here. And if you click on the eye icon there, it give you instructions. You can see that. So let's say, nope, this one's okay. Test results. What are we testing there? Yep. No, we're good with that. Exposure to disease. See what that means. Nope. We're good there. Illness. Nope. And then attendance, say no. 
Oh, and so you did? You weren't allowed to participate? Oh, yes, I was. Yes, I was. We, we could <laughs> let you in. <laughs> Unless you tried to the government required. Yes. So, and that one, let's see. Oh, I don't have. I don't think I have media turned on on this one. But yeah, you'd be able to take the a picture of that uh, with media turned on. So a different kind of scoring form. So, I mean, I like to, I like to tell people, well, if you can assess it, if you want to evaluate it, um, I think you can create a scoring form to do that. Yeah. No, there's certainly a lot of stuff you can use scoring forms for, you know, as far as all the stuff we covered here. I mean, look at all these things, referees, evaluation of coaches, evaluation of players, evaluation of players again in COVID tracking. Right. So, yeah, but it's worth it. I mean, like we, when we started to really take the time to think about what are the criteria? What are the things you want to evaluate? You want to capture information on? Um, because if you can build good scoring forms, it's going to make your assessment all that much more helpful. Um, particularly if you want to do it season over season or year to year. If you're evaluating your referees on the same criteria year to year, you can actually see that their attitudes have improved or their communication with parents have improved and you can see that improvement over time. So I think like you said too with coaches too. So if you have coaches that maybe, you know, don't always get along with parents the best or have you've gotten some critique from parents on that, then you can you know, see how your coaches are progressing over time too. Right. So thank you for joining us today. We're glad yeah. to have you. Um, stay tuned. There will be more in December. We're actually taking next week off um, because it's Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Ruth, do you know what, uh, when our next one's going to be? Do we have a date set down for that one? Um, there'll be Thursdays, same time on Thursdays. Okay. Um, the round table will be, I think we're going to do the U Sports Roundtable on December, December, December. I'm looking at my calendar. Third. Okay. December yeah, I'd love 3rd. to have anybody out there watching today uh, join us in our U Sports Roundtable where we have clubs from all over the world call in and, and uh, share their video and just tell us what's happening because it's just very interesting to get, uh, you know, just people's take. I mean, we had last last week we had people from Hawaii and people from uh, here in Minnesota at, uh, at college level hockey, and we've got people that are going to call in from, you know, uh, South America that play soccer, I think next time. And just, it's all over. And especially, you know, during changing times, it's nice to get the feel of people all over the world and what's going on. And I, I certainly enjoy it. And just, just hearing everybody's views and what sharing ideas on how we can all, you know, keep getting through this together and get better together. So. I like, I like sharing the ideas across sport and, and sometimes there's a new one you can give a try to see if it works where you are. Yeah. No, I'm so, looking forward to that one. <laughs> Thursday, December 3rd. Hopefully you'll join us. Have a great week, everybody.